What's up guys, thanks for joining me for a new video. This one was inspired by, I believe somebody in my print on demand Facebook group. They asked about, they didn't wanna start their own like Shopify print on demand website where they would handle payments on their website. They just wanted to start a website where they could, I think, link to their works on various POD marketplaces. So what I'm gonna show you in this one is a couple things. I'm gonna show you first the ultimate easy mode in case you wanna, I don't know, impress your friends and family by giving them a domain name, you know, for all intents and purposes, a website. Uh, but essentially the domain name you give them would resolve to a marketplace of your choice. For instance, it could go straight to your Redbubble shop. Like I could buy the domain Ryan's Redbubble, or I probably wouldn't want to put Redbubble in it, but like Ryan's bubble shop.com or something. And then I'm going to show you how, when my friends or family go to that domain, it takes them straight to my Redbubble shop. So it'd be like a custom domain or something, you know, whatever, something cool like that. I'll show you how you can do that in like five minutes or less. And then in part two, I'm going to show you how if you want to actually own a space on that domain, essentially how you can host it, how you can get hosting for it and do your own customizations and link to your Etsy store, your Redbubble store, your Amazon store, etc. So if you're interested in seeing those things, let's get started. I'm not running a print on demand giveaway this week, but you can grab my free print on demand mini course using the link in the description. And right next to that link, I've got a link to my print on demand Facebook community. So if you'd like to join, I'd love to have you. We just cracked 10,000 uh, members. So, you know, let's keep it growing. All right, let's talk about option number one as far as getting your own website goes. And this one is, it, it's weird for me saying website. To me, it's more of just purchasing a domain name and then forwarding the domain name to a location of your choosing, like your Redbubble shop. And I'll show you an example of how I do this with uh, my YouTube channel. So first thing, you need to open an account with GoDaddy. Now you don't have to use GoDaddy, you can use any domain name registrar, but GoDaddy is probably the most popular one. It's the one I've been using for the longest period of time. So that's the one I'm gonna use in this example. So you can find a link in the description. Uh, I'm not an affiliate for GoDaddy. Their affiliate program is awful. Like I don't know why it's so bad, but I've never been able to actually get a real link for it. So, or you can just go straight to GoDaddy.com either way. And then once you make an account, which by the way is free, you can um, purchase your domain name and I'm not gonna walk through that. It's essentially click next, click next, click next. By the way, quick, while we're here, while we're talking about it, GoDaddy is like the king of upselling during the checkout process. I don't, I mean, I've been a web developer since 2008. Um, you know, I used to dabble back then, but I was building websites back then. I don't know a single person ever that's gotten through the GoDaddy checkout process without getting at least one upsell not including myself, right? Cause I mean, I. so I'm just saying, if you buy a domain name, just pay for the domain. Don't worry about anything else. I got you covered. All right, so that being said, now that you've got your GoDaddy account and your domain name, go to manage domains. So you might need to click your name in the top right corner and then go to manage domains, but either way, it should be in the control panel. Go to manage domains. Now you should see a list of all your domains. I have a bunch of domains on my account. So I blurred out a couple of the private ones, but as you can see here, I've got ryanhoag.com, ryanhoagpassiveincome.com, and ryansmethod.com. So if you want, like in this example, uh, I am going to show you how I redirect ryanhoagpassiveincome.com to my YouTube channel. So what I did was I checked the checkbox next to it, and then I scrolled back up, and I went to where it says forward, and I clicked that, and then I clicked right here, forwarding domains. And then it just triggers a little pop-up on that page. So what you wanna do is where it says forward to, set that to either HTTP, HTTPS. For YouTube, you would use HTTPS and uh, then put your link in. So I used youtube.com slash Ryan Hogue Passive Income. The forward type, uh, again, if this is just gonna be a permanent thing, leave it at 301, otherwise I would just use 302. And then hit save. And then it's probably gonna take like 20 to 30 minutes to propagate. If it takes an hour, don't worry. Um, give it a little bit of time, but that should pretty much work. Like that's pretty much it. That's all it takes. <laughs> so then you can go to ryanhoagpassiveincome.com, go or whatever domain you bought, give it like up to an hour and uh, it should just redirect you straight to the website. So if that's your Redbubble shop that you want to take people to, put your Redbubble link there. If it's your Etsy shop, put your Etsy shop there, um, etc. You can also do some other interesting stuff. Like you could buy... 
um, ryansdesigns.com forward slash. Maybe this is something I can do in my course. And uh, because I don't like to give everything out on YouTube, unless there's a lot of interest, then maybe I'll just do it for you guys. But I don't want to do too much technical web developer stuff on this channel because I don't think the YouTube algorithm likes it, honestly. Um, So, I mean, the YouTube algorithm is fine with it, but they like it when you kind of stay in your lane at one niche. At least that's my read on it. Um, Like I did my Bitcoin video, got like a couple thousand views, but not as many as it should have. And I've done some like stock market videos, doesn't do as well. So anyways, uh, it's not that hard to do. I'm sure you could probably just Google it too. Anyway, so that's it for the forwarding. Ready? Now I'm going to show you the second option. If you want to host your own website, give you complete flexibility, complete control over everything. And this video, check the timestamp. It's not a four hour video. So I'm not going to give you like a full tutorial on how to do everything that I do on like ryanhoag.com, which I built from the ground up, did the front end, back end, database, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, But I'll show you how to, at a minimum, use GoDaddy and then use the web hosting company that I use to get set up with both a domain name and hosting option, make the two work together so that you can then, you know, if you want to do like links to all your shops, for, for instance, you could do that pretty easily. So again, um, first things first, you already have your GoDaddy account, you have your domain name, but now you need to manage your domain name the same way I just showed you how to do it, except instead of going to forwarding, go to name servers. And then your name servers by default will not look like what you see here. So you just need to hit change and then put what you see here, ns1.fatcow.com, ns2.fatcow.com. Now that's assuming you're going to follow my tutorial, which is going to involve using this company called Fat Cow. Now, it's a funny company name, but they, I mean, here's the thing. I've been using them for since 2008, so I guess like 12, almost 13 years. When I joined, they were one of the best companies. And at this point, I'm kind of just locked in. So if they're no longer the best, I'm just speaking to my personal experience here. I know they're definitely affordable, by the way. And, uh, they don't limit your like databases. They don't limit your bandwidth. I mean, it comes with minimal restrictions. Like you can't start the next YouTube website and host like video streaming. But, um, but like if you want to stream video, just upload to YouTube and embed it anyways. So you can use fat cow again. If you use my affiliate link, that would be awesome because they do have an affiliate program. And after you sign up for your account, which by the way, I think the first it's like $3 and 15 cents a month when you first sign up. So it's a really good deal for the first year. And if you can get multiple years on that introductory rate, that's your best bet. Uh, All right, so next thing you want to do after you have your account is go grab FileZilla FTP client. Now, if I'm getting a little technical, it's okay to slow down, pause the video, go watch a FTP tutorial. But honestly, it's, it's like, it's not that hard. Like it says, see at the top there, it says host username password port. Well, here's all the info you need. Host, ftp.fatcow.com. Enter your username and your password for the account you just created. And then port, I don't even think you have to enter a port, honestly. But if it makes you, just port, put port 21. Then hit the uh, green server icon, or the it's a server icon with the green check mark. That should connect you to the server. Or actually, just hit quick connect, the big button. Um, and then after that, that's where you, you're now connected to your web host via FTP. And you can create a, a folder where I would just call it like websites or something. And then within the websites folder, put a web put a folder for your domain, the one that you just purchased. So if my website is ryanhogpassiveincome.com, I'd probably just make a folder called Ryan Hogue Passive Income. All right, now you're gonna need to use this link to do the next step. Unfortunately, like right now, of course, of all days, they are upgrading their control panel. So when you log into Fat Cow and look at the control panel you have limited access to things that we used to be able to do easily. So now you have to use this link right here and I'll put it in the description to access the portion of the domain manager where we can point so that when somebody comes into your new domain, like ryansdesigns.com, I can tell them where to point to on the web host because we can host multiple websites with fat cow on the same account but I don't want to point ryanhoag.com where I'm pointing ryansdesigns.com because ryansdesigns.com might be where I'm just doing the print-on-demand shop links, whereas ryanhoag.com is like my blog for everything I do on YouTube. So use this link, and it should take you to your domains manager. Now, the easiest way to, well, for you, it won't matter, but there is a search function. (laughs) I think I have like 40 or 50 um, domains because, I mean, it's been 12 or 13 years, but 
I go in, I search, and you can see here I had two results. Uh, I searched Ryan Hoag. I got RyanHoag.com and RyanHoagPassiveIncome.com. So I clicked more info next to RyanHoagPassiveIncome.com, and then it expands beneath it. And it says overview, pointers, transfer, DNS, name servers, security, subdomains. So I click pointers, and then I set the first drop down to subdirectory, and then I put the path to the directory I created in FTP to host this website's website files. You know, essentially like the the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you know, the stuff that makes up a website. Um, to the non-technical people out there that are still watching, thank you for making it this far into the video. And just bookmark this in case in the future you ever decide to give it a shot. Because um, I mean, this is essentially how it works, regardless of who you use for web hosting and whatnot. Um, that is, I guess, unless you just go straight to like WordPress or Squarespace, which is probably the easier option. But um, if there's any demand, I guess I could do like a tutorial on something like that that's more user friendly. Um, they have they aim to avoid making you do anything like this, but this is good stuff to know, anyways. So change that drop down to subdirectory. Change this drop down that I blurred because I didn't want to give out like my public pathing. Well, it's really private. It's masked. So every time you go to RyanHoagPassiveIncome.com. What it's resolving to behind the scenes on my FTP server or my web server is um, the file path that I blurred there. So anyways, uh, and then if you need a website template, you can get a, a ton of free ones that are really nice that you just need to go in and customize the pictures, the content, etc. at websites like startbootstrap.com. So I'll put a link also in the description, but completely free. Um, they'll be mobile friendly and look good on desktop. So startbootstrap.com couple uh, pictures of some of the free templates that you can access there and um, you know again like I, by the way I didn't put a slide in but I use notepad plus plus as like my go-to text editor it's quick easy free um, so I would just download a template open it in notepad plus plus swap out the content and then re-upload it to FTP remember how I showed you FileZilla FTP then you just drag drop it uploads it and as long as your pointers are correct and your name servers are set, your website will work. And then, by the way, if you're wondering, like, what's next? How do I link to all the uh, shops and all that stuff? I mean, I don't want to do an HTML tutorial, but I will say you can do cool stuff like this. You can embed products from Redbubble into your website. So if you didn't know that, this is how you do it. Log into Redbubble. And then on the left-hand side there, under Artist Tools, go to Link to Other Sites click that link and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. It's kind of hidden, but you can show off your work on your own website, your non Redbubble website. So this is actually an up-to-date version of your portfolio because it goes and it grabs it from Redbubble and Redbubble returns the request. It receives and returns the request. So it's, an, it's not static. It's updated. It's, you know, in real time. Anytime someone's on your website looking and you can grab the embed code right here Again, you'll see it. You'll see the section at the bottom of the um, of the page. You can change the number of rows, number of columns, etc. So I think the default is two by two. I set it to two by five, but it didn't update the preview. Um, but anyways, this is a preview that Redbubble will generate for you of what your works will look like, and then it also includes a view my portfolio button. So you can drop this in your website. Um, Ryan's what did I say? Ryan's bubble designs.com or something. And uh, you can just embed your stuff. And when people click it, it goes straight to Redbubble for purchasing. So pretty cool, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, kind of a random one. But, you know, when I saw it in Facebook, I'm like, ah, I could answer this pretty easily. So all the links will be in the description. And just a quick reminder, I do have a full print on-demand course in case you want to check that out. Ten modules, over 100 lectures. If you follow it, it pays for itself. So just letting you know that that's out there. But thanks for watching till the end, guys. Appreciate it. If you want to do me a quick favor, hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed and you want to subscribe, that would be awesome. I'd be happy to have you here. But thanks, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.